Welcome to the Breadbox, the channel dedicated to Commodore computers. Today we're going to look at another game for the Commodore 64 that is a legend, but it's something I've only just recently discovered. It's called Laser Squad. So if you're new to Commodore 64 or you just got your V64 and you want to have new games to play, check out Laser Squad. Laser Squad is a turn-based strategy game released in 1988 where you control a squad of space marines to complete seven different missions. Now that's how you open up a door. If you've played the 1994 XCOM game UFO Enemy Unknown on the PC, PlayStation or Amiga, this all might sound familiar to you. And that's because they're based on this game, Laser Squad. These games were made by Julian Gollop and UFO Enemy Unknown was originally going to be the sequel to Laser Squad all those years later. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to play this game because it took me a couple of times before I actually understood how good this game really was and also to work out a few of the idiosyncrasies that I couldn't work out initially. This might save you a bit of time as well. Now the great thing about this game is that you can customize the squad's armor and also weaponry. That's individually. Each individual soldier can have different form of armor and also a different weapon. And I'm not just saying one weapon as well. You could have a rifle, a rocket launcher and a grenade. But everything you put onto your soldier's uh, armor or weaponry uses up action points. And of course the initial credits that you have to use to arm your squad. Now what these action points are is every time you turn around in the game, every time you walk, every time you load a weapon, every time you change a weapon, this all uses action points. So, and the fact that you need to take into account is that the more you load up your squad members, if you find items on your mission and pick them up as well, uh, if you put more armor, more weapons, more ammunition onto your soldier, the quicker he tires out. So after you have loaded up your soldiers, you need to populate them onto the map. On each map, you have red and yellow squares. This is where you can put your soldiers. And also, if you go to my community tab, and if you scroll down to my post that I've got for CRT games, or, or in other words, cartridge games, there's a link there for about 700 different games on the Commodore 64, including Laser Squad. And the great thing about CRT format is that they're very quick to load. And I'll be updating my community tab every couple of days, so check it out. Okay, so we're trying to populate our soldiers into the red and yellow squares. In this particular mission, this is the first mission, which is Assassins, you can populate your soldiers on either side of this building. So a bit of background into what this mission's about. The Marsec Corporation manufactures the best weapons in the galaxy, and its boss, Steiner Regnix, this is the one you want to try and assassinate in this mission, uses unsavory methods to extract the best from his top scientists. The use of mind control drugs and cybernetic implants is widely used but officially denied by Marsec. The Interstellar Trading Standards Authority is powerless to intervene. A small band of ex-employees have decided to assassinate Steiner Regnix. They have located his private home on the planet CX-1 and will stop at nothing until Steiner is dead. This little white cursor, you can scroll over anything on the map and it'll tell you exactly what you're looking at. Uh, this is a great little feature of this game. And this, these maps are huge. The, initially the first one, the Assassins, is a very small home. But as you progress through the game and try different missions, the maps get huge. Absolutely incredible. Especially for the Commodore 64. And remember, you're also controlling uh, 7 to 10 different soldiers as well. So let's move one of these soldiers right now. All you need to do is move that cursor over the soldier you want to move. You press fire on the joystick and that will bring up the menu. Now in this case we want to select that particular marine or soldier. You may notice he's got 43 action points. As I move around, he's got less. So every action uses an action point. So now we're going to go into the change menu because he has no weapons actually loaded. When you go into the fire menu, you have different options of how to fire your weapon. Here's a breakdown of that menu. So up top you've got the name of your weapon you've got loaded. In this case the rocket launcher. You have the amount of action points you have left as soldier. You have your ammunition that's available for that weapon. And then you have the different formats of shooting. You've got auto shoot, or auto shot, snap shot, aim shot, or throw. You notice that the accuracy is listed there. 
and also the action points that'll cost to use that form of firing. A general rule of thumb, that the higher the cost, the more accurate your shooting will be. And in this particular scenario, because I've got 30 action points for this turn, uh, two snapshots I should be able to get off in this turn. Now this is not the normal way to open up a door in this game, but I just like it because it's quite dramatic, and I'm just using it for the sake of this demo. But you wouldn't usually want to waste your rocket launcher in such a, a frivolous manner, as they might say. But it is effective. And if you do have enough ammo and enough action points, of course you can then fire again. But in this case, we want to end fire, because I only had one rocket anyway. I still have 16 action points. So now I can actually load a new weapon. So at least I'm still armed. That's used 11 action points. But now I want to change to the next soldier. Two ways to do this. You first of all need to end your move. And then you can scroll down to the soldier you want. Or you do have an option of choosing next unit as well. So again, this is Private Harris. I need to change his what he's got in his hand. I'm going to load up a heavy laser. And now I'm going to turn. It's all using action points. And move towards that door. Or well now, well, it's not really a door anymore. It's just an open mess. And... If you catch sight of an enemy droid or enemy soldier, down the bottom right hand corner it's going to come up enemy, so you know that there's enemy in your line of sight. You can only see things within 90 degrees of your vision. So if something's behind a door or behind a wall, you're not going to know it's there until it's possibly too late. And the fact that you're usually uh, outgunned or even outnumbered, it's worthwhile positioning your soldiers for each turn so your, all your angles are protected. In 1988, when this game first came out, it came with three missions, but a further two were available by mail order. When this was released by Blade sometime later, five games were included in the game with two more missions that were available by mail order, making a total of seven missions. So you can use this scanner feature to check out the map, which indicates where your squad is, but also where the enemy droids are. But they'll only show up if they're in sight of your marines at the time of using the scanner. But it's a really handy feature all the same. So after you've finished all your turns, now you go into end turn and then end turn again. This allows the enemy to move around. If they walk into your, or move into your line of sight, they'll show up as it showed us just then. Otherwise, it's hidden movement. You do have the option to save the game or save your progress as you go. But if you're on the C64, of course, you can just go into your menu and save it that way as well. The game ends when victory points reach 100, either you or your opposition, or if you complete your objective. Here we go. We see an enemy droid. At this stage, I've only got seven action points left, so I'm a bit limited on what I can do. But let's check it out. Go into the fire and snapshot. Gives a 12% chance of hitting this enemy. Let's give it a go. All you need to do is position that cursor on top of the enemy that you want to shoot. And then choose the firing format you want. In this case, snap. These droids usually take about two shots to kill. Depending on your weapon, of course. If it's a rocket launcher or grenade, it's just one. To go into end fire, and now I want to choose another marine to get into position to hopefully finish off that droid before he finishes off my soldier. So again, click on it, select. I've got 37 action points. I just have to move into position. In theory, I should be able to see it from this angle right here. So even though it hasn't come up saying enemy, um, I can see it. So uh, I'm pretty sure I should be able to shoot it. So I'm going to press fire. I have 19 action points. This should allow me to do an aim shot. So in theory, I, I should hit it. But notice I've only got 19% accuracy rate. So I'll go down to aim. I've got it. Ah, I just remembered that the very first shot I fired with the other Marine was from a pistol against a droid that's a, like a pea shooter. So I'm going to try again. Okay, I've just missed. So I might need to have three shots to actually get this droid. But now I'm, I'm running out of marines who are actually in that position to shoot that droid and now i'm in the open so what i need to do is end firing and also end turn on this particular soldier and move my other marine into position to be able to shoot as well 
I don't like the fact that I'm actually running out of action points just to get here. So now I have three marines in open pasture. That's not good. So as mentioned, to end your turn, go down to end turn for a particular soldier and now to end turn for your whole squad. And now the droids are going to make most need of my soldiers properly. Oh, oh that was lucky that missed. So the good thing is the droids don't have a 100% accuracy rate either. They've got a certain percentage of accuracy. So just because you're in the open, it doesn't necessarily... Oh. Okay, obviously there's multiple droids, so now I'm down to just three squad members. Whew. I don't like where this is going. Uh, okay, now I'm down to two squad members. Initially, this is only the second time I've ever played this game. I played it once and I realised this game's awesome, and I thought I'm going to make a video on it. Uh, but I'm not very good, as you can tell. But practice makes perfect. And, oh, unbelievable. Okay. I'm pretty much getting wiped out here. Uh, that's why it's worthwhile saving your progress as well, so you can go back and reload your game. And once you get to 100 points, or like the enemy gets 100 points, the game is over. So, all right, so I got I died shortly after that, so I thought, well, okay, let's try again. So if I'm now actually in the same position where I was before. And this is a whole new game, though. What I've done is I've actually started from scratch, rather than just reloading where my safe position was. Notice the little white guy in the bottom left hand corner? That's your target. That is Steiner Regnix. So after the droids have their turn, I'm in good position to hopefully achieve our objective. Okay, as long as I don't get wiped out again in the same room as last time. And that's why it's also worthwhile loading up your marines with extra armor. I load my marines up with two armor. So you can go up to number four because the more armor you have, the more action points you're using up or your soldiers are tying out faster. Okay, so if I can survive this round, there's my target. Hoo -hoo. Okay, so I survived that round. Now all I need to do is make sure I get Steiner Regnix. I've got one marine who's in sight of him. Oh. Okay, he's actually moved out of sight, so I've got to make sure I get into uh, a line of vision while I still have action points to be able to get rid of him as well. But the problem is also, there was that droid who was above me, who if I walk into his line of sight, he has a, often has a free shot to shoot me. So all these things I've got to take account of when I'm trying to position up to get my enemy. I'm going to give it a go, I'm going to move across to the left and hopefully I don't get shot by a droid from the top. Uh, apprehensive. Well, there he is right there, just in the doorway. Okay, I do have enough action points to try and get rid of this droid and also try and find Steiner Regnix as well. So I've got 40 action points. I'm pretty close, so I don't need to have an aim shot because I'm so close. So I should be able to get away with using a snapshot. Gives me 20% accuracy, but because I'm so close, I should get it. Awesome. Okay, that's great news. That's protected my back, so now I need to move down to try and find the uh, enemy or the target for this mission. I still have 27 action points. Ugh, it's getting pretty low. Oh, there he is. Okay, so now I've got 9 action points. This allows me to use... Oh, I think I only be able to use... Yeah, auto shot. Because a 6% chance of shooting. But the great thing about auto shot is that you have multiple shots. They're all very random. And the accuracy is not great, but hey, I might be able to get him from this distance. So I'm going to choose that auto shot. Uh, I can choose a second point for... F uh, I don't really understand what that is exactly, but I just press in the same position anyway, because that's the target I want. So I've got three rounds that I can shoot. So oh, oh, look at that. Two... Oh, perfect. 100% game over, finish that mission just like that. Usually that auto shot is useless, so I'm quite surprised I got two shots, hit it. Okay, anyway, so let's look at the rest of those missions on this game. So remember there's seven missions, mission number two is Moonbase Assault. In this mission, the Omni Corporation's Moonbase on Arid 6 holds security information 
on the 30 billion population of Galaxy Sector 9. Somewhere in the Sector 9 is the Rebel Star system, the infamous Rebel Star, which still remains a secret from all its enemies. However, the arid moon base represents the biggest threat to the Rebels so far, with an increasing amount of data on Rebel movements. A small band of Rebels have penetrated the moon's outer defences and are poised to launch an attack on the moon base itself. To get victory in this scenario, a sufficient number of data banks and analyzers must be destroyed to guarantee victory. A data bank is worth 5 victory points and an analyzer is worth 2 points. The laser squad wins if 100 victory points are gained. In mission number 3, Rescue from the Mines, a routine rebel mission has gone badly wrong. A reconnaissance mission in one of the Metallurgs Corporation's mines installations has resulted in death of most members of a rebel squad. However, all was not lost. Three members of the squad have been imprisoned on one level of the mine, and they have vital information on the mine complex. A small squad, that is your squad, has hastily been assembled to free the prisoners. How the laser squad gains victory out of this level, all three prisoners must escape to guarantee victory. Once a prisoner is released from his cell, move him to an elevator door and move into the elevator to escape. Something I haven't mentioned up to this point, this is also a two player game if you want it to be as well. It adds a whole different dimension to Laser Squad, so check that option out as well. In mission number four, the Cyber Hordes. In this scenario, a small band of rebels must defend a rebel plant station from attack by an Imperial droid squad on a large planet of Azar. The base contains seven stabilizer cores that prevent seismic instability under the planet's thin crust. The Imperial squad leaders have pinpointed the weaknesses in Azar's defences and have assembled a squad designed for the task of destroying the cores. If they succeed, the existence of the entire rebel colony on Azar would be threatened. The rebel squad gains victory in this way. In the two-player game, the rebels must eliminate all eight of the droids in order to win. In the one-player version, the droids receive re reinforcements. The rebels must destroy 100 victory points worth of droids in order to win. In mission number five, Paradise Valley, the destruction of their planetary stabilizer base has left the Arizanian colony in ruins. The volcanic eruptions have destroyed most of the major installations and the Imperial Soul ships hover above the atmosphere like vultures waiting for their prey to die. Such a massive attack on such a small colony could only have one objective, to locate and capture the rebel blueprints for the advanced starfighter. Rather than destroy all their work, the rebels have transferred all the data into a small security device. A squad has been assigned the task of escaping from the colony with the device in order to reach the distress beacon on the western plains of the map. Only the most ingenious squad leader could possibly negotiate Paradise Valley. This mission is won by the rebels taking the security device which is initially carried by Corporal Hansen over to the right hand side of the valley. Mission number six, the Star Drive, was the first of the two games that came in the final expansion pack for Laser Squad. In this mission, a group of mercenaries have captured a Star Drive controller. A squad, that's your squad, must go into their hidden base and retrieve that device. Mission number seven, the final mission on the expansion pack. This one is pretty much an all-out deathmatch, as equal teams are pitted against each other. Large 10-man squads with reinforcements arriving frequently to hunt down each other in a huge arena. This is a lot of uh, enemies to combat. Ten different commandos to fight in this uh, all-out deathmatch. But of course if you're playing two-player, one player is the laser squad and the others are the commandos. And the funny thing is in the instruction book it says that if you are playing two-player, the one player must not look at the screen while the other player is having his turns. Man, you can imagine the temptation though to check that out. So what a great game this is, Laser Squad. Download it, give it a go.
play one player, two player, it's going to give you hours of action, hours of strategy, hours of fun. And if you're confined to your house because of sickness like I am, uh, if you're a bit worried about going out because of the coronavirus, well, hey, this is a good way to be able to bunker down and enjoy hours and hours of really good gameplay. I hope you enjoyed watching this, and until next time, I'll see you later.